the video. Sure, hey, fire away. <laughs> uh, coach, um, uh, you're coaching the Wolfers, right? So yes, yes. What's your um, What's your assessment of your team? Well, season. well, you know, coming off a, of a, an inaugural season that was challenging for them, when you go two and twenty-four, uh, you know, it wouldn't be realistic to talk about uh, competing for a championship or winning a championship right now. What we need to do is create a foundation uh, to build on and and provide an environment that's conducive to this organization moving forward and being a good basketball team. And that means just some fundamental changes as to how we approach our work ethic uh, each day. And so in terms of wins and losses, I, I wouldn't know what to predict. Uh, but for me, uh, the same thing I've said a number of times is that uh, winning, whether it's in, in basketball or in your daily lives, is, uh, is a byproduct of doing things the right way. And so for, for us right now, we're concentrating on a daily basis on doing things the right way, playing the right way, uh, treating your teammates the right way uh, so that we can create an environment that guys can use their skill sets to the best of their abilities. Coach, can we ask after your stint with San Miguel, uh, what, have you, what have you been doing after? after well, I was, I was, in, I was in, back in the States for a little bit with family, and then I was the national team coach for Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. And it was, uh, what a wonderful experience. Mm -hmm. I can't say enough nice things about that. It is very humbling as a coach to be selected to represent a country that you're not from. Um, yeah, to, it's still uh, the most proud moment of my coaching career, despite whatever wins or losses have ever occurred, or awards have ever occurred. Uh, being named the national team coach was really special to me. I love the people of Vietnam, and I had an opportunity to, to live there for a few years, and the relationships that I created there are, are relationships that will last a lifetime. And so uh, my time being the national team coach was wonderful. And uh, so now I moved on uh, to, to China, and um, we're excited. I'm excited to be back in the ABL. I see a lot of uh, friends and some familiar faces. Um, this is my first time being back in the Philippines in a while, and it's wonderful. It's great to see some of these guys. Um, but yeah, after, after uh, being with San Miguel, I went on to be the national team coach of Vietnam, and, and what a special time that was for me. How difficult was it uh, handling Vietnam, considering that it's really a basketball country, and I think their their professional league is just starting. So how difficult yeah, was it? it was not difficult at all. Uh, now, in terms of their experience, certainly they don't have the experience of where I came from in the U.S. or or in the Philippines or uh, other areas that I'd coached. But uh, they have a fan base that loves basketball. Those players were coachable uh, beyond belief. Um, they were wonderful to work with. Uh, again, if I'm coming across that it was um, a real pleasure to, to be there, I'm coming across the right way because uh, I, it was not challenging in terms of working with them at all. They were just great and honorable people. Uh, you know, they're not, they don't have a lot of tall players there, which can be challenging for them on the international level. Uh, but in terms of their coachability, in terms of their desire, and in terms of the passion of the fans, those fans were great. We had in, for not only the Vietnamese national team, but also specifically with the Hanoi Buffaloes. I, I can't say enough about those those people. They were, yeah, they were, they're close to my heart. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can we ask about your stint with San Miguel? Uh, how, sure. how tough was it or how, oh, how oh, gratifying was it? Uh, oh, loved my, the, oh, I loved my time here in the Philippines. Yeah. It really challenged, uh, challenged me as a basketball coach because you're surrounded by people who know a lot about basketball. So you get, you're not able to just to do things because you want. You have to be able to really think it through and have reasons for that. We won an awful lot of games uh, when I was with San Miguel and, and I was the consultant there. We weren't able to win a championship, which is always a little bit disappointing when you come close. I think we were probably a couple of minutes away, but we ran into a tough San Miguel coffee team that was coached by Tim Cohn, who is just an, an incredible coach out in Southeast Asia. Got all the respect for him. And so we made a good run. Uh, and, I, and I have friendships and those guys that I miss a lot. You know, I, I just got to see Chris Ross the other day when they were out in Macau. And uh, Marcio Lassiter is a, someone else that I had a, a great deal of respect for. And June Mar and, and Arwen Santos. Those are just wonderful guys to work with. And so my experience in, in the Philippines was incredible. And uh, I miss those guys a lot. So And, and it, I'm so happy for them. I know they've strung together a number of championships. Uh, Leo Austria has done a, an incredible job there, and uh, he's a he's a hell of a coach. And uh, those guys have so much to be proud of. And from a distance, I've been proud of them as well. Uh, from wherever I am, I've followed to watch them to see how their success is, and, and call some of those guys and congratulate them. And yeah, so it's been great to see their success. Coach, going back to Coach Tim Kona, he's, he'll be the coach of the Philippine team in the Sea Games. Uh, your thoughts about uh, that? You mentioned that he's... He's a great coach, yeah. yeah. I mean, this guy is as good a coach as, as there is out there. Uh, so 
uh, not, he's a class act. He's been doing it for a long time, he, and he consistently has success. So there's a reason he's been so successful. He's knowledgeable. He's a great leader. Uh, and my time there, he and I got to know each other a little bit, and um, and I thought I thought the world of him. I really did. I think that he he is an example for a lot of other coaches on how to make a career overseas, and how to incorporate yourself in, in the local community. And so I think it's a great choice for uh, him coaching in the Sea Games, and uh, I look forward to watching those Sea Games play. What's your take about um, the Sea Games uh, competition? Uh, a lot of people are saying that uh, the Philippines will still be the favorites, but. Uh, I think other countries have been closing the gap. Uh, you've coached the Vietnam, you've seen the, the uh, Southeast Asian games in the area. What's your thoughts about that? Sure. Uh, the Philippine team is is the favorite, without question. They still are, are the, the most talented team and the deepest team. Uh, and, and when you have that much love for basketball in a country, that's going to happen. And, uh, yeah, they've got incredible fans. So, no, I think they're certainly the favorite. Um, Indonesia has played well as of late. They've got a good team basketball environment. And Thailand has also uh, got some good players on that team for sure and I think Thailand has been making some major strides over the last few years. Uh, this year the Vietnamese team will have some Vietnamese American uh, players as well and so the, their level of talent will certainly jump up a bit and uh, I believe Kevin Yerkes will be running running the show for them and he's a heck of a coach and so I, th I would expect to see Vietnam uh, make a little bit more noise than they have before and uh, I'll, really be, I'll be really be interested to, see, to watch those games and see how they compete. <laughs> Coach, you've coach, uh, also, you've also coached Stanley Pringle, and I think he's sure, part of the, love Stan. Yeah, yeah, my guy. He's part of the pool for the. Uh, he's part of the pool for the Sea Games, and uh, did you do you expect uh, did you expect him to be like this good, uh, Stanley? Uh, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. From the moment he um, walked on the floor in Indonesia. Uh, we got him, he was playing in the Ukraine after his stint at Penn State, and he walked on after the first practice, and I walked right into the owner and said, well, we should sign him for two full years. This guy can really, really play. And not only is he a great player, but he's a really good person, someone I enjoyed working with. And we've got some special memories uh, with, with that team and, and with him. And I got to see uh, Jarrett Kenyatta, and Mario Wusong, and Steve Thomas here, and some other members of that team that were awfully fun to work with. But Stan's just a heck of a player, and he's a basketball, uh, he's a gym rat, so he's in there all the time and he loves it so I like to watch him play he's got a dynamic game off the dribble and can shoot and he's had some good success in the PBA yeah. do you see him like uh, one of the best guards in Asia Standing. I would think so. You know, I haven't had an opportunity to really assess all of all of Asia's players, but certainly in Southeast Asia, I thought he was extremely good. Um, and yeah, I, I got a lot of love for Stan, and I wish him tons of success. How about you? going back to your team? Uh, of course, uh, what you're optimistic. Uh, how, how optimistic are you that uh, at least you could get to the playoffs, or maybe improve on your winning? Well, from last season. well, I hope we can improve on our wins from out the last season. That would be a, that would be tough if we didn't. But uh, I, you know, I think that we can compete for the seventh or eighth playoff spot. And once you get in there, um, you never know what can happen in the playoffs. But yeah, you know, our goal again is uh, not so much um, you know reaching reaching a specific uh, nominal point or, or nominal amount of wins, but really to make sure we're creating an atmosphere that equates to winning in the long run. Coach, how did this coaching thing with Joe I started? Uh, I was reached out to by, by the uh, uh, by the by the Zuhai Wolf Warriors at the time, and um, I saw them playing in the ABL a bit, and saw some of their players were dynamic. And you know, it's like anything else for coaches. You, you're uh, you're doing your best to help the team you're with, and and if opportunities come, and if you're able to have any success, and you try and take those opportunities, which I think you have to be careful as a coach as to which opportunities you take. And not all jobs are necessarily good jobs for you. And I'm very blessed to have an ownership group and Mr. Lobo. Uh, who have really given me autonomy in terms of making basketball decisions, uh, in terms of selecting the personnel and, and everything that we do on the basketball floor. And so when you get an opportunity like that, where you get to choose your players, when you get to determine those things from a coach, that's, that's as much as you can ask for. And after that, it's my job to make sure we're putting out a better product.